Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me once again today. And a shout out to all of the new people who have joined us here. I believe that God leads me into certain directions on purpose. I was looking at an earthquake that happened up there in Montana. It was a magnitude 2.7 and it was close to the Fairchild Air Force Base. And I didn't know anything about this Air Force Base, so I looked into it. And they had a video about being two weeks prepared for a disaster. Now, it has been a long-standing tradition to have at least three days worth of food and water and medical supplies. But now, evidently, they are telling people uh, the three-day supply should be in your bug-out kit that each person in your home should have. And for you at your home or wherever, you should actually have two weeks now of food, water, and medical supply. The video evidently is called Two Weeks Ready. I have shared it on my Patreon account. So those of you that uh, wish to subscribe to my Patreon account or go to the link which I'm going to give to you which will be below this video in the more information box you can go there and watch it. So I found a document that was made by the military uh, Washington government military. It says prepare in a year. And what they're recommending here is just to take one hour each month. That's it. One hour a month to do something to prepare. I think everyone can take at least one hour a month to plan for a type of disaster. But do we really ready with all the different things that are happening um, a year? Do we really have a year to prepare? I hope so. How many disasters will happen here in the United States and around the world within that one year? Wildfires, a terrorist attack. God help us. I hope there's no World War III. An economic collapse. They're already talking about hyperinflation. I used to complain when canned fruit of different types were a dollar fifty a can. Sometimes you'd find them on sale for like 99 cents, and I was shocked. Nowadays, it's up to 244 And then for the generic brands, it's $1.28 when they used to be about 75 cents a can. Yeah, I was watching Patera, and she went to Costco yesterday. Um, we do not have a Costco here. Boy, I wish we did. Yeah, if they raise the rent interest rates even more, yeah, we're definitely going to be heading into hyperinflation. So stocking up does help beat inflation. It's a good idea when you go shopping not to just pick one can. Um, if you can, get up to five extras and put them away. Now there is a misconception a lot of people do not realize that the expiration date on canned foods does not mean that those canned foods are expired. As long as the seal at the top the bottom and the side is still intact. There's no rust showing. Um, canned foods will last indefinitely. And if you figure the cost for uh, freeze-dried food or dehydrated food, um, this is actually cheaper than buying freeze-dried or dehydrated food because it lasts indefinitely. I don't have a car. The car that I do use um, used to be my daughter's. It's probably 24 years old, and I don't drive it very much, but it still runs really good. Not bad. Uh, when she just got out of high school, I think it was, we bought the car and only paid like $800. Uh, last fall, my son came to my house and added some antifreeze to it, and I did not know that the dome light, uh, the switch in the door had malfunctioned and the battery was drained. And I've been on my kid's butt to uh, come out and give me a jump and to um, you know start the car so it's been sitting for a year it had a full tank of gas in there I did add uh, maybe two months ago um, gas treatment to it because um, before uh, the, <laughs> the battery went dead I noticed that the engine light was coming on and probably even at that time uh, the gas in the car was probably a year old and we know that gasoline does go go bad 
anywhere from maybe six months to a year. So I added this, and my daughter came out um, this last week, and she jumped the car. That's when I found that the dome light had um, stayed on. That's why the battery was dead. So in the meantime, we just took the dome light out, and the engine light, after it ran for a few minutes, um, no longer turned on. Um, so evidently this gas treatment did work in my car. So we drove it around for about a half an hour, seeing how it sat there for probably a year. It sat there so long that the indentations from the tires in the asphalt um, <laughs> were visible there in the ground. But Walmart, if you um, have a subscription to the Walmart store, they will deliver to your home. So that would save on gas. And it would also um, save time for you to go shopping. When I go shopping, I always end up spending more. I thought, okay, I'll try that. Or, yeah, I didn't know I needed that. I forgot about that. And, yeah, I usually end up spending <laughs> double what I originally had planned on buying. So online shopping definitely saves me money because then I stick to uh, what I originally planned for my budget. So going back to this military document, now saying that we need to be two weeks prepared. They give a guide of what you can do once a month. The first one is communication plan. Number two is action plan, water, grab and go kit, important documents. Uh, six, number six is two weeks ready, fire safety, utility safety, under the bed, drop cover and hold on, shelter in place, and home hazard hunt. They have um, their little icon here that you can download the document. I'll make that bigger for you. I don't know if it'll work. You might try scanning this logo with your phone to download this document. I have talked about if there's a disaster and the phones don't work in the past, in past videos, how text messaging would possibly still work when the phone lines are overloaded after a disaster. You might be trying to find out if your loved ones are okay after some event, a fire, an earthquake, whatever. So this is why it is important to have an out-of-area contact. They also have on here a quick tip. You may be able to send a text message to your loved ones on your cell phone, um, but keep the messages short. And it says, ask an out-of-area friend or relative to be your contact person. This person should leave, live at least 100 miles away from you. They can send messages to your family in the affected area and then reply back to you. An out-of-area contact is the key piece of great communication plan to let family know about each other being safe. It's also good to know that uh, you might be moving to a different location and where you'll be heading to. Especially if the internet and cell phone signals are sparse following a major event, such as a big earthquake. It may be difficult to think during a stress of a disaster because normal routines have been disrupted. Write down numbers and information ahead of time on an out-of-area contact card. And they um, give an example of this. Know how officials will communicate with you. Counties and cities often have their local alert systems. The state of Washington will use the emergency alert system and wireless emergency alert. This will come across all forms of media, TV, radio, and smartphones. Uh, and sign up, it says here, for your local emergency alerts. They're going to do one in October, a test run in October, evidently. The government is... But again, these alert systems will only work if you have power. You know, your TV won't be working, uh, the radio, things like that. If you have a radio, make sure it's an AM radio and battery operated. You could make up these cards and put them in backpacks. You can have them posted on your refrigerator, um, somewhere where you would have it handy. You could have it in your bug out kit. Here we have um, the meeting place. Um, it says house fire meeting place, um, emergency contact number if you're hurt, and out of area contact person. 
the disaster meeting place if you cannot return home. And it talks about learn what type of disasters are likely to happen in your area. Myself, I prepare for everything. Um, when I lived in Oregon and we had a large earthquake back in uh, the late 1980s, I want to say it was, FEMA came around to our town to inspect all the homes and buildings. Uh, my town that I lived in at that time had a population of about 350 people. The school had a population of 500 because all the kids from the outlying smaller cities uh, were bused into our town. So after the earthquake, FEMA came to our house and did an inspection. And the inspector, the FEMA inspector, told me that in my town of 350 people, I was the only one that had extra water and other types of emergency supplies. I was the only one out of 350 people. Things you should do before an evacuation. Plan how you will leave and where you will go if you are advised to evacuate. Identify several places you could go in an emergency, such as a friend's home, in another town, or a motel. Choose destinations in different directions so that you have options during an emergency. If needed, identify a place to stay that will accept pets. Shelters may or may not be able to accommodate your pet. Um, have supplies ready to take. Also very important is to be familiar with alternative routes and other means of transportation in your area. Always follow the instruction of local officials and remember that your evacuation route may be on foot depending on the type of disaster. Um, I have a bicycle with a basket. I also bought my daughter a bicycle uh, with a cart that she can pull behind the bicycle for the children in the case of a disaster and cars are not either usable or the roads are impassable. We even have it figured out who's going to go and pick up which grandchildren because they all don't go to the same school if a disaster happened uh, during school hours. If the earth was impacted by a CME, a coronal mass ejection, such as what happened during the Carrington event, um, the majority of cars might not be working or say there was a, a nuclear blast up in the atmosphere where everything that has a chip would be fried yeah once again your cars wouldn't be working so um, yeah I made sure that we all have bicycles so before this happened one of the things that you should have is assemble supplies that are ready for evacuation both a go bag you can carry when you're evacuating on foot, bicycle, or public transportation, and larger supplies for traveling in a per personal vehicle. Review your plan every six months so everyone remembers what to do. Like I said, when people panic, they often forget. Also, conduct fire and emergency evacuation drills. Test and recharge your fire extinguishers according to manufacturer instructions. Many of you will remember when I posted about uh, the neighbor's barbecue set their trailer on fire. And luckily I saw it happening and rushed over with my fire extinguisher and basically saved their home. Yeah, they put the barbecue too close to the house, to the trailer, yeah, and it set the porch on fire. And the fire was uh, raging away to their front door exit. Luckily they had a back exit. No steps there, but at least they were able to get out. Yep, the dummies left the uh, barbecue unattended. They didn't even know that uh, their house was on fire. Replace and store water and food every six months to a year, depending on the expiration dates. Like I said, uh, for canned goods, the expiration dates are meaningless. That's just sell by best time um, dates. Yeah, they want you to uh, buy it as often as possible. If you evacuate by car, always keep a half a tank in case of an unexpected need to evacuate. Keep a full tank of gas if an evacuation seems likely. 
gas stations may be closed during emergency, and unable to pump gas during power outages. I also have in my uh, prepper supplies a hand pump. It's I haven't used it, haven't tried it out, but I thought maybe if the hand pump could be hooked up to a, a garden hose, maybe it could be lowered down into uh, the storage tanks of the gas station to uh, siphon out gas. I don't know. I also have a gas-powered pump uh, for water. Um, it's actually made for farmers to put into ponds to pump out water. It also says plan to take one car per family to reduce delays. That would also be good so if there was uh, traffic jams um, you wouldn't be separated from the rest of the family and it would help reduce traffic. Make sure you have a portable emergency kit in the car. If you do not have a car, plan how you will leave Viva other forms of transportation or on foot. If evacuation is urgent, you will not have time to prepare, which is why it is important to plan ahead. Certain evacuations like a tsunami may require an evacuation by foot. Well, a tsunami comes after a large earthquake and often the roads and bridges um, are inaccessible. Bridges collapse. I did a video about how bad the bridges are um, there in the state of Washington in Oregon. And I'm sure you guys have all seen the uh, disaster that has happened in different countries. Um, Morocco recently, how the roads, yeah, there's no way you could get through the roads because of power lines. Think of Maui. Yeah, and what happened there. People ended up, that did survive, um, ended up evacuating their cars and getting out on foot. You should have a battery-operated radio and follow local evacuation instructions, but don't always depend on them. Use common sense. Uh, during the uh, Maui fires, uh, they were so unorganized, they ended up causing the tragedy and loss of life because um, the police officers closed off roads for evacuations. This is why you need to know different evacuation uh, routes ahead of time. Make sure you take your emergency supply kit. Leave early enough to avoid being trapped by impending hazards, such as volcanoes, floods, tsunamis, and fires. If you have to leave your home, make sure you close all the windows and lock the doors. Unplug electrical equipment such as radios, televisions, and small appliances. Leave freezers and refrigerators plugged in unless there's a risk of flooding. If there is damage to your home and you're instructed to do so, shut off water, gas, and electricity before leaving. Leave a note telling others when you left and where you are going. Someone suggested, and I thought it was a really good idea, if you're going to hunker down in your home and you're worried about rioters, um, and you don't want them to know that you are there, uh, put on the uh, front door the note saying that you're not there. You know, anything like saying, went to mom's. Wear sturdy shoes and clothing that provide some protection, such as long pants, long sleeve shirts, and a hat. Check with neighbors who may need a ride. Now, depending on the situation here, it says, follow recommended evacuation routes. Do not take shortcuts. They may be blocked. Well, that might not always be the case because, uh, yeah, the roads may be completely jammed with uh, people who decided to leave later and not earlier. And it just be bumper to bumper traffic. Yeah, always have a plan ahead of time for alternative routes. Be alert for road hazards such as washed out roads or bridges and downed power lines. Do not drive in flooded areas. Yeah, recently there in uh, Massachusetts, there was roads that were completely washed out and giant sinkholes. Many of the different types of disasters that could happen would be things like avalanches, uh, droughts, earthquakes, floods, landslides, severe storms, tsunamis, volcano, it says here Washington has five major volcanoes, um, Mount Baker, Glacier Peak, 
Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Adams. Uh, wildfires, they can cut off your exit. Another thing to be aware of is hazardous materials. Hazardous material incidents are intentional or unintentional release of material. Think of gases. A lot of times these different types of toxic gases, you can't smell them, you can't see them. That's because of their chemical, physical, and biological nature pose a potential risk to life, health, environment, or property. Radiological. A radiological hazard is the uncontrolled release of radioactive material that can harm people or damage the environment. Many, many years ago, I had a dream where a dirty bomb was set off um, in Times Square. What was interesting about this dream, and it was so vivid, it was like I was actually there. But it was planted by, I don't know if it was a rogue, rogue group of military personnel, but it was military personnel that had set off the dirty bomb. About a month ago, maybe it was, in Australia, um, a man who worked for the government um, was taken in for questioning because... He had in his home radiological materials to make a dirty bomb. I don't know what happened about that, but I did post a, a video about it. Many of the uh, things that is required to make a dirty bomb is very easily accessible. There is also the threat. It may be small, but it's still a threat. With all the illegals coming into this country unvetted, that the only reason that they're coming here is to do a terrorist attack. Only today they arrested after a manhunt that took three, almost three weeks, um, a man from Brazil who killed his living girlfriend, I think it was, in front of her children because he was worried that she was going to uh, tell the government that he was wanted for murder in Brazil. He escaped from a prison there in Pennsylvania and God knows how much money we spent doing a manhunt like I said almost for three weeks shutting down schools and yeah he broke into homes and got uh, food clothing and stole a rifle from a man with a man in the garage where he stole it from the man um, evidently shot at um, this illegal immigrant there was also a case in North Dakota where a man came here to this country and was slowly, slowly building up arms and ammunition for a terrorist attack where he killed three police officers several months ago. Um, he was here for like 12 years and was planning his attack. And now we got the gangs, uh, groups of young people doing the smash and grabs, robbing people, Walking up to them broad daylight, yeah, you definitely need to keep your head on a swivel nowadays. The number one thing that you should have and be prepared for besides shelter is water. And there were some interesting things in this uh, post that I did not even know about. It is vital, it says, that all household members learn how to shut off the water at the main house valve so that you don't lose clean water which you could use. The effects of gravity may drain the water in your hot water heater and toilet tanks unless you trap it in your house by shutting off the main house valve, not the street valve in the cement box at the curb. It says here the valve is extremely difficult to turn and requires a special tool. Label this valve with a tag for easy identification and make sure all household members know where it is located. In addition to storing water, be aware of your surroundings and where you can find other sources of water. Available water sources include hot water heaters, toilet tanks, streams, lakes, rivers, etc. Consider adding a water filter to your kits so that you can safely use water you find. I have life straws. Um, I probably should get more, but here on Walmart you can see there's different um, items of life straws. And they can be 
used and carried in your backpack or in your car. Toss it in the uh, glove compartment or your emergency bug out kit that you should have there. This is another thing that I have added to my prepper supplies. It's a water key. Um, these keys are made for outside faucets that you can put on the faucet. So you can turn them on and drain the water from buildings. Sometimes you walk along and, um, in alleyways and outside buildings and you'll see a, a faucet valve, but there's no handle. And these are made to fit into where that um, handle would go so you can turn on the water and retrieve water. And much like a lug wrench that removes the uh, lug nuts from your car, it comes in different sizes because you just don't know what size you might need uh, for that valve. And it's made from steel, so it's pretty heavy duty. How much water should you store? For your household, we recommend at least two weeks worth of water. That is one gallon per person per day to take care of drinking, cooking, and hygiene. You might need less depending on your cooking methods and if you're using wet wipes for hygiene. Um, I have a case of those. Don't want to waste water, you know, taking a, a bath or a shower or even a sponge bath. So I have a case of wet wipes. Plan to drink a minimum of one quart of water per person per day. Remember to have water for your pets too types of containers. Plastic containers with screw lids such as a two liter soda pop bottles or food grade plastic jugs. I have a food grade um, I believe it's a 55 gallon barrel um, in the basement that I can fill up. Um, don't use glass bottles or old bleach bottles or any containers that might hold toxic substances. Avoid using plastic milk jugs. Yeah, do not use milk jugs. They are, different, they are difficult to seal tightly, and their plastic becomes very fragile and brittle over time. Consider multiple locations to store water, especially if in an apartment or a small house. Thoroughly rinse out the container and the lid with water and fill it to the very top of the container for extra safety. Thoroughly rinse the containers with a weak solution of liquid chlorine, um, 8 to 10 drops, in 2 cups of water. I've heard recently they're saying not to use chlorine bleach because it comes in different strengths. And sometimes, yeah, you definitely don't want uh, the bleaches that have scents um, added to them. This here is another thing that I did not know about. Um, is adding liquid bleach recommended? The Food and Drug Administration and the Environmental Protection Agency say that tap water does not need anything added to it before it is stored because it already has been chemically treated. Commercially purchased water does not need any added to it. Keep it in its original uh, sealed container. It is recommended that stored tap water be rotated every six months. Now that's only a recommendation, which is good because I got some bottled water that I probably had stored away for several years. I probably would not use that for cooking, um, but it could be used for cleaning, hygiene. Commercially sealed water is safe for up to two years. Some are labeled for longer storage. The only thing that should be used to purify water is liquid household bleach that contains 6% sodium hypochlorite and no thickeners, soaps, or scents. Boil, boiling water kills bacteria, viruses, and parasites that can cause illnesses. Treating water with chlorine be bleach kills more, most viruses, but will probably not kill bacteria. Therefore, boiling and then adding chlorine bleach is an effective water purification method. They also show you how you can make distilled water. You know, you boil it um, with a catch method above it, maybe plastic or another lid, 
so that the condensation drips down into the other container. Boil the water for 20 minutes. The water that drips from the lid into the cup is distilled. This method allows the vapor resulting from boiling water to collect in the cup. This condensed vapor will not include salts or other impurities. This will not work for water that's um, got radioactive contamination. You should take proactive steps to create a kit that you can take with you in times of an emergency that will last you for two to three days as long as it's lightweight and easy to carry or tow along. Now this is just the bug out kit. Supplies to have in your bug out kit. Food, water, flashlight, extra batteries, light stick, radio which is either battery operated or crank. The whistle, I've talked about having a whistle with you at all times, uh, multiple reasons. Uh, toiletry and wet wipes, um, access to important documents, a first aid kit multi-purpose tool and knife like i said that um, little gadget to turn the water valves on garbage and plastic bag cell phone charging yeah i have uh, three different um, portable batteries that i care carry in my purse you can buy them for about 10 bucks at walmart medication pet items duct tape a set of extra clothing definitely needs socks um, a hat gloves items you need for children and other household members things to keep them entertained and uh, comforted maybe a, a special little uh, stuffed animal or something if this kit is used in your car you can have a small shovel jumper cables a tow chain road floor flares waterproof blanket uh, matches in a waterproof container and depending on the season um, yeah maybe hats gloves boots things like that and extra keys so if you pack this stuff away here's a quick little tip to make sure that the clothes would still fit or their shoes still fit that you may have packed away yeah they grow quick don't they make sure you have food that will last two to three days Maybe some beef jerky. You got to think about the weight. Uh, foods that don't require refrigeration or cooking, and little or no water. High energy food: peanut butter, granola bars, trail mix, comfort food, uh, cookies, hard candy, etc. Dry meats like beef sticks and jerky. Pet grab and go. Pets need a grab and go kit too. Have two to three days of food, water, and their medication, leeches, and cages, if, if reasonable. Uh, the cages I have for my four cats, I have four foldable. Um, they're fabric with, um, I think it's a plastic bottom um, for my cats. A checklist of important documents. Household, anything to help identify people in your household. Children, pets, marriage, birth, death certificates, passport, social security cards, driver's licenses, green card, pet microchip information. You know what? A lot of the uh, migrants um, that have been coming across the border with children, um, they've been writing phone numbers of who to contact here in the United States. So you might want to think about that uh, during a disaster to put your phone number um, a way that they can be found and, you know, hooked back up with their family. Financial. Anything to help you request insurance and disaster assistance after a disaster. Lease or home ownership. Vehicle registration. Title. Loan. Utility bills. Proof of address. Banking accounts. Retri retirement investment accounts, insurance policies, home, auto, renters, life, flood sources of income and pay stubs, proof of employer, medical checklist, health, dental insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, veterans benefits, list of medications, 
doctor office phone number, uh, medical power of attorney, disability documentation, emergency contact information, the doctor's office, dental office, pediatrician, uh, the pet's vet's employer, supervisor, schools, and then valuables. It's got listed here photos of valuables, copies of family photos, and photos of home. Because I rent, I have renter's insurance, so this is a good thing to have photos of your valuables. You know, you might have your house robbed and um, police or the insurance company is going to want to have proof that you actually had that item. I mean, you got to think about fraud nowadays, and so many people said, I had this and that and blah, blah, blah. Well, an actual photograph would help document that. Now, here it says, for a quick tip, be two weeks ready. It is as simple as adding one can of food to your cart every time you go grocery shopping to add to your disaster supply, and don't forget about the pets. If you can afford more than one can every time you go to the store, then do it. I believe we have hyperinflation coming. It's definitely going to happen if they raise interest rates again. Then we have a tip about cooking. Never burn charcoal or use camp stoves in, indoors. This could cause carbon monoxide poisoning. Camp stoves, sterno, or butane stoves, barbecues, gas, or charcoal fireplace after an earthquake do not use your fireplace until the chimney and flue have been inspected for cracks sparks may escape into your attic or through an undetected crack and start a fire since a lot of emergency food options are just add water hot water use clean or filtered water or boil for approximate time when cooking washing dishes won't be easy but it's still doable Warm water over a stove, otherwise use disposable utensils, cups, and plates. You can always label the different cups for each person. Um, also have um, paper plates or paper um, bowls, you know, that you can take for camping. That's a good, good idea. Lighting. Flashlights with extra batteries. Camping ladder, lanterns. Battery operated only for inside use. Candles are not recommended and may cause fires. Light sticks. These can provide light for 1 to 12 hours and can be purchased at many department stores. Solar lights. Lights can be recharged using the sun and still works to a degree when cloudy too. I actually have um, some solar lights that were made for outdoors. Um, the small probably three inch little solar panel is in my window and then the light it has a cord running to the light I have one in my kitchen and also one in my bedroom I also have backup solar batteries and I have um, LED lights that don't take a lot of lighting that I can plug into my uh, solar batteries shelter it's common for people not to want to sleep in their homes for a few days following a major earthquake yeah, think of all the aftershocks. Having an alternative means of shelter will help you and your family be as comfortable as possible. A tent or waterproof tarp. I have a tent just for the grandkids being in a small enclosed little area. Um, they can pretend they're camping out inside the house. Sleeping bags, I have those. Blankets and pillows. Rain gear, emergency space blankets. Um, that's those silvery things newspapers or magazines provide installation for the cold and heat yeah learn from the homeless people they'll wad up newspaper and put it on the inside of their clothing to retain heat if you have a van a camper or rv you can use it as an alternative shelter i also have tie down cords for uh the tarps so you can tie the tarp if you have um maybe a tree or some pole that you can tie it to and then put the tarp across that. Protecting food when the power goes out. Well, I have my backup um, power generator for that, but if you don't, keep the refrigerator and freezer doors closed as much as possible. 
A full refrigerator will maintain safe temperatures for up to six hours. A full freezer will maintain safe temperatures for one or two days and a half full freezer for one day. Discard at risk refrigerated food that are warmer than 40 degrees. Um, if in doubt, throw it out. If you think the power will be out for several days, try to find some ice to pack inside the refrigerator and freezer. Remember to keep your raw foods separate from your ready-to-eat foods. Recently, there was a fellow who ate some spaghetti that was not refrigerated, sat out on the counter for like five days, and he died from food poisoning. He, he evidently was a, a college kid and did not know that you cannot eat food that has not been refrigerated if it's got meat or tomato sauce things like that yeah they go bad sanitation the lack of sanitation facilities following a major disaster can quickly create secondary problems unless the basic guidelines are followed if the water lines are damaged or if damage is specified do not flush the toilet avoid digging holes in the ground Untreated raw sewage can pollute groundwater. It also attracts flies and promotes the spread of diseases. Store a large supply of heavy-duty plastic bags with twist ties, disinfectant, and toilet paper. A good disinfectant that is easy to use and low cost is a solution of one part liquid bleach to ten parts of water. If the toilet is not able to be flushed, it still can be used. Uh, this is less stressful for most people than using some other container. Remove all bowl water. Line the bowl with a heavy-duty plastic bag. Add a little amount of deodorant or disinfectant. Securely tie the bag and dispose of it in a large trash can with a tight-fitting lid. This large trash can should be lined with a sturdy trash bag. Um, portable camp toilets, small trash cans, or sturdy buckets lined with heavy-duty plastic bags can also be used. Those with tight-fitting lids are the best. Large plastic bags and toilet paper should be kept at work and in the car for use if you're away from home. These can be wrapped in newspaper in preparation for future disposal. First, aid supplies. Sterile, 4-inch adhesive bandages. Sterile 4x4 four four gauze pads. 4 rolled gauze bandages. Large triage bandages. Butterfly bandages. Adhesive tape. Scissors, tweezer, moisten towelettes. A bar of soap. Latex gloves. Aspirin and acid. Anti-diarrhea medication. Instant cold packs. Antibiotic ointments to dress wounds, safety pins, needle and thread, sanitary supplies, and splinting materials. And you can always add on to that. I have um, a stapler for skin. I also have um, um, for stitches. And it even comes with um, a practice material to practice um, stitches if you have to. In, in an emergency and then they also sell uh, things to stop bleeding and for burns you can get those too pretty cheap online miscellaneous items yeah the first thing I noticed on here was a non-electric can opener paper cups plates and plastic utensils battery operated NOAA weather radio extra batteries flashlight headlamp I have that too or a solar lantern um, an ABC fire extinguisher, whistle, insect repellent and sunscreen, toilet paper, toothpaste, toothbrush, and other hygiene items, phenomum supplies, rolls of plastic and duct tape to seal broken windows, plastic bags for waterproofing, um, N95 um, air mask, cell phone charging cord, Portable cell phone battery. I, I said I have several of those. A pocket knife, a multi-tool, extra eyeglasses. I always think of that 
uh, movie, the, the television show, Twilight Zone, where the guy wanted to be alone and he often went into the bank's vault, vault to read his books and then, yeah, the world came to an end and he was the last man on earth and he broke his glasses and he cried because he, he didn't have any glasses to read all his books. Prescription drugs and medication, a family picture, games and books, contact lens solution, backup for adhesive devices, and wheelchair repair kit. Um, I would have extra um, inner tubes for the tire and a um, bicycle repair kit. Have on hand before you need it um, the tool to turn off your gas. Um, here it says right is tight, left is loose. So you turn it going towards the right to make sure you turned it off. If you turn off your gas, um, they tell you not to turn it on until after an inspection. Here are some disaster items you should have under your bed. I have it beside my bed because there's no room under my bed. I have it filled up with uh, uh, food. Sturdy shoes to protect your feet from broken glass. Work gloves, preferably leather, to protect your hands from broken glass. Flashlight and light stick, especially for nighttime response. Additional recommended items would be a hard hat to protect you from falling objects like chimney bricks, down trees and branches. A bicycle helmet also works. Yeah, so many people think they're going to rush off to the store and get the supplies. They used to say you would have three days worth of food in the grocery store, but uh, it would probably be gone within the first day if you don't prepare ahead. And they're saying here if you take just one hour a month, within a year you'd have everything put together. Um, myself, I would do it as soon as possible. Anything can happen at any time. You just don't know. So they're recommending now to be two weeks ready. Not three, three days, but two weeks. Myself, I plan for a year. I'm hoping the things that I do have stocked up would last me several years, but I have a large family. I got six grandchildren, two children of my own, and then um, their boyfriend or girlfriend. They're not married right now. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much. For those cups of coffee, boy, I appreciate you guys um, sending me cups of coffee. I definitely need it. As always, be prepared. I hope this helps out. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.